Hi everyone, this is Gail, and everybody knows that the big thing now is bib necklaces. So I was in Target not too long ago, and I saw this necklace, not Target, it was in Kohl's. I saw this, and I thought, you know, I could make that out of clay. So that's what I'm going to tr attempt to do. So what I have done is I have conditioned a package of uh, frost white glitter. Frost white glitter? I thought it was... Anyway. White... The white glitter clay. It is Primo Accents. And I looked at this, and this necklace, I'm not going to make as many pieces, I don't think, unless I go with smaller. But there's circles here, and then there's some smaller ovals, and then some larger ovals. And I've got some Kemper cutters here, and I picked out two, but I think I'm going to go down a size. I think I'm going to use these two as the ovals and go down a size on the circle also. I think what I had picked out are just going to be too big. And what I'm going to do, of course I don't want white, so I mean you may like white, but I was just thinking it would look pretty with a little bit of color. So I'm going to try adding some turquoise to this and I'm going to start with just a little bit because I don't want it to be blue blue I just want it to be tinted blue and I'm going to run this through the pasta machine and I'm going to fast forward through this so that you won't have to listen to this but I'll be, I'll be right back Okay, I blended this really pretty pale turquoise glittery clay. This is going to be nice. And if you look at the picture here, they have circles at the top, small ovals there, then they have a large oval, four medium ovals, and two little ovals. So I wrote down here that we needed eight circles, that's 11 oval, small ovals, four medium ovals, and one uh, big. But I tried this once and I've ended up re-filming it because it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. It didn't look as finished. I am going to cut two. I'm going to cut double. So let me cut the large oval first, and I'm going to cut two of these. I've got them on my plastic so they don't stick to anything. And I'm going to move them over to my card stock, my index card. And what I'm going to do is I want to use these jump rings. They're really pretty jump rings. They're a little large, but they've got their silver and they have a twist to them. And they're just gorgeous. I got these at Fire Mountain Gems. And these are 16 gauge, no, 8 millimeter is what I'm looking for. These are 8 millimeter. 6 millimeter would probably do better, but we're going to go with what we've got. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this jump ring in halfway, not quite halfway, and make sure it's straight. And then lay this oval. It's still not straight. You wouldn't think it would be that hard. And lay this oval over top of it. And what we'll do is smooth these edges. You can use your finger or a tool. But I'll do that in a minute. I'm 
They went in a little bit too far. I need to pull that out just a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing with the medium oval. So that's the large one. Here's the medium. I need four, so I'm going to cut eight. And I'm going to go ahead and lay out four. And see if I can line up these jump rings. I'm trying to see if I can find where the split is in the jump ring and make sure there it's inside the clay. And try not to put these in quite as far as the other one. I may have to redo that large one. Whoops. It's a little bit sticky. And I think it's because there's a lot of translucent in these and this white glitter. And you don't want to press them all the way in, but at least halfway in. Then I'm going to cover them with the others. Try to get it straight. Go ahead and pull all of these out. Well, I got a fingernail mark in that one. Hope I can. Turn it over. So then we'll work on those edges. And then there, where's my picture? I need one small one on either side, so I need four. These are going to be the hardest because they're so small, but hopefully I found that sometimes if I run my fingernail around this, I can feel where the seam is. I think it's right there. Of course, I don't have much in the way of fingernails. Don't hesitate to use a tool instead of your fingers because like these are sticking to my fingers. Okay, so then what I'm going to do, if you have a little clay shaper or a 
um, a little rubber tool, a metal tool, but just take something that's, and try not to put fingerprints in your clay, but just kind of shape it a little bit. Oh, that was dirty. That wasn't too smart. I think I used it for some black clay last and I didn't clean it. might have to redo this one but just smooth around the edges to kind of get rid of that seam if you don't mind the seam being there then you can leave it and don't forget the part inside the jump ring do that for all of them. Now I'm only going to do the bottom row right now because the others have more jump rings in them. So I'm just going to get these kind of smoothed out and then I'll be right back. Okay I've done these and as you can see I've laid them out and this is a good idea because look at this. This one is a little bit crooked. Can you see? that jump ring is a little bit over to the side so before you do anything with it you still have an opportunity to straighten it up and that looks much better this one looks like it might be in a little bit much because it needs to attach to another bead but just look at them. Make sure that they're the way you want them. And just treat them gently because you don't want to put fingerprints on them. And I'm not being too picky about my seams. I'm just kind of smoothing the edge a little. And I don't care if there's a seam in there. There. So this is going to be the bottom row. Now you look on this picture, and the second row, we've got one medium one that has the top and the side. So let me write that down. One medium, and I'll just draw a picture. I need one up there and there. And then same thing on the other side. I need, let me come back out so you can see what I'm doing. So I need one medium. That's an oval with the top and this side. Then I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need seven medium. And I'm thinking this out. I'm thinking I'd do better just to put the side ones in right now. I think that's what I'll do. Because if you look here, they're going to have to hook on to these. So I don't want one on the bottom. And I don't want one on the top because that one will have them. So I think what I'll do is just do nine mediums one with just one on one side and then seven on all sides so you don't need to watch me do that but I'll show you what I have when I finish okay I have had to make some adjustments it's funny how when you start working with something you find that what you're doing doesn't work and what I had done was put the tops on these and then realized that they also needed to go in here so it's a good thing I didn't um, put the tops on these as I did them but rather than slitting them I'm going to just lay out a layer and I'm trying to get them pretty evenly spaced And 
let me go ahead and while I've got these here let me go ahead and put these center ones on so it kind of holds everything together and you can see I drew I took a plate just a bread plate and drew a round circle because I wanted these to be you know pretty fairly round and uh, you just have to play with them a little bit to get them exactly where you want them trying to get them so there's a little bit of space between each one and that space is on that line so we've got those then there's one on either end that's put together with a ring and try to keep that on this line or somewhere near it it doesn't have to be perfect but at least I know now it won't be lopsided. And you can see I've already got marks in these little circles because I was trying to put them together a little while ago and realized I couldn't get them to fit and then realized I was using medium size ovals in the center instead of the small. So hopefully this will work better. We shall see. Just a tiny little space, only because you want to see these pretty jump rings. And hopefully this will work the way it does in the picture. If not, it will be back to the drawing board for me. I think I'll use my craft knife to get in here. I just need something to move the move, add a little bit of space here. And let's see, that goes to this one, which means this has got to move over a little bit. See what I mean about playing with it a little bit? Let me turn this. At least this way, messing up the inside doesn't matter because I'm going to be putting a cover on it. And let me see if this one will match up now. Now these may have to touch. In order to get all of these in. My phone is ringing, but it has been telemarketers all day. You know, I have no more Robo, which is awesome in stopping these calls, but every once in a while they get a number series, a telephone number series that no more Robo doesn't have. And what they've done is they have put, um, let me put a new circle on that one. They have a series of numbers now that is the same area code, or not the area, yeah, the same uh, prefix as my phone number. So it looks like it's a local call. Then when you answer it, it's congratulations, you have been selected. Let me see how this is going to work. And it's either 
because I have stayed in one of their resorts, I am eligible for a discount. And this, well, I'm sorry. Other than going to convention, I haven't been anywhere in forever. So I've not stayed in anybody's resort. I think this is going to work. We'll see. Although there's just not much space. But anyway, so I've, I've just... I've reported several calls, but they all start with my um, my prefix. And I'll tell you, I'm not going to tell you my area code, but my telephone number starts with 728. So all of these numbers start with 728. And then... You know, uh, the other, the last four digits are different from mine, of course. But that's how they get you. Now this one, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, because this had a loop, which fit into a loop that was there. But I think what I might do is just loop these three together. Let me loosen this up before I go moving it. I think I'm just going to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see, in this picture, the center one here just hooks into that eye. It doesn't have one of these over it. It just has the little loop. So I don't have a loop for it to hook into. So I'm just going to put it there. And then I need to put a hook out here to attach to a chain. And a hook out here. Let me see if I can find that end. I want to make sure the where it opens, I think that's it, is inside. Oh, I still need to put these in here. Move that over a little bit. And I may be able to get away with, but then I won't have the loop up there. I'll go. I don't know if this is going to work or look right or not, but I'm going to put this loop up here. Okay, and now what we need to do is just close up, put our cover on. Now the thing is, this the one in the picture is going to be flexible because it's hanging loose. There are beads that are hanging loose on these. On these. Um, what are these? <laughs> Jump rings. And mine are not going to be hanging on those jump rings or connected. They're, they are connected, but they're it's unbaked clay, so they're not going to be movable, flexible, whatever you want to call it. But um, I think this is going to be pretty. I have some things to smooth out, which I can do. That's not a big deal. 
just all the messing with it and all the corrections I've had to make. I've got a few little marks in here and I'll just go through and make sure those marks are taken away. But I need to cut seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of the small ovals to cover the other that's on there. And of course these three didn't want to come out. But I love this color. I'm going to have to think of something else I can make with this clay because it is just gorgeous. But just try to match up your sizes and make sure that your jump rings are covered. Now I don't know if you've ever noticed or not, when you cut something with a cutter, there actually is a right side and a wrong side, and I know I'll not be able to show you here, but when you cut down, the sides just slightly bend down, and on the other side, it's a very sharp corner. So what I always try to do is try to put that sharp corner on the inside. Now I also need to find something to put this on to bake that um, is going to give it some just a little bit of curve. I just need a little bit of curve when it bakes. Maybe just that much. And I don't think this plate will do it. No, it's too flat here. I'll have to find maybe a bowl that will give it just a little bit of curve. Let me see if I can push this in just a little bit so it doesn't stick up quite as much. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to smooth all these out. Whoops. Smooth all these out, and then I'm going to bake them, and I'm going to bake them for an hour, and I'll be back after they're baked.